Hello, my name is Shara Savage. I am a consultant in the Office of Assessment and Accountability. Today's training will cover the end of course assessments. Today's agenda will include the early graduation pathway, testing dates, ordering information, test security and training, receipt and return of materials, miscellaneous policies, and COVID-19 guidance. Now, I would like to give you a brief overview of the early graduation pathway and the end of course assessments. Is there a difference between the early graduation pathway and simply graduating early? Yes, there is a difference between a student who is in the early graduate pathway and one who, is, who graduates early. Although the wording is similar, graduation, early graduation pathway is tied to an early graduation certificate, scholarship, and benchmarks, whereas graduating early is tied to the completion of all minimum high school requirement graduations. Let me say that again. Graduating early is tied to the completion of all minimum high school graduation requirements in less than four years. Even if a student is not a part of the early graduation pathway, the decision for the student to graduate should be made in conjunction with the school administration and central office. The early graduation program will stay in effect. Senate Bill 158 establishes that early graduation is a deliberate pathway for students in grades 9 through 11 who wish to move on when ready receive a diploma from the district and be eligible for acceptance into Kentucky public universities, nonprofit colleges, independent colleges and universities. The pathway provides a financial scholarship known as the early graduation certificate to support this action. So I just want to reiterate that early graduation pathway is a deliberate pathway for students in grades 9 through 11 who wish to move on when ready, receive a diploma from the district and be eligible for acceptance into Kentucky public universities and nonprofit independent colleges and universities. The pathway provides a financial scholarship known as the early graduation certificate to support this action. Who is eligible for the early graduation pathway in the EOC assessments? Students participating in the pathway must, must meet requirements set forth by 704 KAR 3305, including the following. Students must notify the principal within 30, the first 30 days of the school year in which they intend to graduate. Enter the early graduation pathway prior to October 1 of the year in which they intend to graduate early. Be flagged in IC prior to October 1. Graduate in three years or less. Students exceeding three years do not qualify for the incentives identified with the early graduation pathway. Take the state administered college readiness exam, which is currently the ACT and meet the ACT benchmarks as set forth by the Council on Post-Secondary Education. Take and score proficient on all required EOCs. To meet this requirement, KDE will provide EOCs for those students participating in the early graduation pathway during the 2021 school year. Now let's take a look at the assessment dates. Here are the 2021 testing windows. Students may only test within the designated testing window. This is to ensure that KDE's secure test policy is observed to maintain the integrity and validity of the scores. Please contact me should any questions arise for testing students during a specific test window. What are the steps to order EOC assessments? Step one, students must, students must submit a letter of intent and be approved for the early graduation pathway by October 1 of the year in which they intend to graduate early. 
The student is then designated in IC as an early graduate. Using the early graduation pathway flag and a signed letter of intent is placed in the student's cumulative folder. Once all students are flagged appropriately in IC, the DAC or designee will be able to run an early graduation pathway order report by school in IC. So in IC, DACs will go in to and select ad hoc reporting, data export, state published filter, then they will select the state published early graduation EOC order report filter, then select D limited values, then click export. The report will display the fields as shown on the slide with the SSID, the student SSID number, district name, address, and school name. DAX will need to add five column headings, Algebra 2 EOC, Biology EOC, English 2 EOC, U.S. History EOC, and Test Window. Please do not abbreviate or change column heading titles. Step two, the DAC or designee will ensure the information listed on the order report is correct for each student. If a student's name does not appear on the early graduation order report, but has been approved for the early graduation pathway and will be testing during the 2021 school year, please add the student's SSID and test needed. When a student's name does not appear, please ensure that the student is flagged correctly in IC. Students must be flagged as early graduate students in IC to receive assessments. If a student is not testing during the 2021 school year, that student may be deleted from the order report. DAX should monitor EOC orders to ensure ordering aligns with student individual learning plan. The DAC or designee will manually enter the test order for the 2021 school year to include indicating the appropriate test name and test date for each student. As a reminder, the EOC assessments are in the following courses. Algebra 2, Biology, English 2, and U.S. History. An X should be marked under the needed EOC exam for each student and an exam window date stated. If a student will be taking assessments in more than one test window, the DAC or the DAC designee will need to add additional rows for the student to ensure the correct tests are ordered for the appropriate testing window. All early graduate pathway students must be listed on the order report in order to receive assessment materials for the 2021 school year. The spreadsheet will serve as the order for the EOC materials. Step three. The DAC or designee will return the order report via email to OAA by November 13th. The DAC should include the name of the BAC or BACs in the body of the email. All order reports should be emailed to the attention of myself, Shara Savage. Now let's take a look at test security and training. What is the required training? Anyone with the potential to be involved in the handling or the administrating of the assessment should, uh, is required to be trained in the administration code. Those who will be providing accommodations must also be trained in the inclusions of special populations regulations prior to administering the test. Now let's talk about test security. From the receipt to the return of the materials, all materials must be kept secure. When materials are not in use, the materials must be in locked storage. No personnel may review, edit, or share, either verbally or non-verbally, the content of the test. 
students may not be given ex access to test booklets by any school personnel prior to testing. School personnel may not reproduce any portion of the test booklets or answer documents, except for transcription of responses by test administrators when materials are damaged or contaminated. Reproductions are limited to hand transcription. School personnel may not keep any hand copied portions of the test used for transcription. Schools, school personnel may not audio tape, videotape, photograph, or photocopy materials. School personnel may not retain, discard, recycle, remove, or destroy test booklets without specific instruction from the DAC, BAC, or KDE. A word of caution, test questions are copyrighted material. Secure materials and may not be duplicated in any way. Materials must be stored in a secure area when not in use for testing. Storage locations within classrooms must be secured with a double lock. What is involved in receiving and returning of the test materials? Materials for each test window will be shipped to the DAC within 10 days prior to the opening of the testing window selected. Please inventory materials within 48 hours after they are received to be sure that you have the correct test booklets and answer documents requested for each student. The shipment will also include an inventory sheet and teacher's manual. If there are missing materials, please contact me, Shara Savage. Now, currently, OAA is researching options for an electronic submission of student answers. Therefore, this may impact what is included in the order received. I will communicate any updates in a Monday DAC email. How and when are materials returned to OAA? The table provided gives the shipping deadlines associated with each testing window. Districts and schools are responsible for paying the return postage. Districts and schools can choose their method of return shipping, but the shipping provider must enable tracking and provide a tracking number. Districts are encouraged to return materials as soon as a student, as, as soon as students are finished testing to ensure timely scoring. The DAC or the designee is to return the testing materials on or before the established return deadline. The shipping address is included in the EOC guidance document. Now let's take a look at scoring information. The table provided is the cut scores for each content area and performance level of the EOC assessments and the CPE benchmarks. Just a reminder, students must score proficient on each EOC assessment and meet the CPE benchmarks on the ACT. OAA will score assessments and return scores to the DACs. DACs will receive a summary report of all tested students and their scores by content area at the completion of the scoring for each testing window. Individual students score reports with the, the name of the student and the scale score will be sent. The score reports will be provided via the secure web application. OAA will do everything possible to ensure scores are received in adequate time to prepare for graduation ceremonies. However, it is to the district's and students' advantage to test early within the third testing window and to return materials as soon as possible. Now let's briefly touch on accommodations, the calculator policy, and the retake policy. Accommodations. Students approved for accommodations under an IEP, PSP, 
or 504 plan have access to a reader, scribe, calculator, extended time, paraphrasing, reinforcement for behavior modifications, and an interpreter for students with deafness or hearing impairment. So what calculator policy do you use? In order to create a test administration that provides every student with a fair and unbiased uh, assessment opportunity, please follow the KDE calculator policy within the test administration manual. Follow this policy, following this policy will ensure that all students have a measure of their academic achievement that is comparable to all students across the state. Now, can students retake EOC assessments? As part of the protocol for this program, early graduation pathway students who do not meet a benchmark due to extraordinary circumstances have been able to appeal to their superintendent to retake an assessment. OAA will continue to provide this option under restricted circumstances. As a reminder, the option to appeal to, the, to retake an EOC assessment is not simply to keep attempting to receive a higher score to meet benchmarks in order to fulfill early graduation pathway requirements. This is a strong indicator that the student is not ready for college level work if, a, if the student is unable to reach proficiency in either courses or assessment. The intent of the appeal opportunity is to provide recourse for those otherwise exceptional students who experienced an extraordinary circumstance during testing that could have contributed to their less than typical performance. Examples could include death in the family, parent in a car accident, or medical trauma. Students who have been approved for early graduation intent form and are flagged in IC may appeal to retake the EOC assessment once in some circumstances. Students may determine, I'm sorry, districts may determine that an extraordinary circumstance prohibited an otherwise exceptional student from obtaining benchmarks. Such a student may appeal to retake the EOC assessment on the grounds of extraordinary circumstances following the procedure below. The DAC should keep the documentation for the retake on file as OAA may ask to review it. Procedures to retake, procedures to request a retake of the EOC assessment are complete the application to retake uh, to retake an EOC assessment, write a letter to the principal or designee explaining the reasons for appealing to retake the EOC assessment. The DAC should deliver the application and appeal letter to the principal or designee within five days of receiving the EOC, sco EOC score that is below the benchmark. If your appeal is approved by the school administrator, the letter and the application will be should be delivered to the superintendent or designee. If the, if the superintendent approves the EOC retake, the DAC may request the assessment for the next test window. If your appeal is denied by the school administrator or the superintendent, the application process is terminated at that point. Now, what is the deadline? Due to the fact that there will be no remaining test windows after test window three, and because of the amount of turnaround time needed to ship materials, have them return, score the assessments, and prepare score reports, OAA must set a deadline for students retaking the assessments. OAA will not be able to consider retake requests submitted after May 15th, 2021. The retake policy and form can be found in Appendix A of the EOC guidance document. The DAC should keep the rationale for the retake on file. If the appeal is approved, 
the student may retake the test. Orders for retake from the 2019-2020 school year should be included in your order report that will be submitted to KDE by November 13th. For students that, have, that are approved for retakes during 2021 school year, a special order should be arranged with myself, Shara Savage. Lastly, I want to touch on the COVID-19 guidelines and testing interruptions. Staff should follow all local and state safety expectations and best practices guidelines when administering EOC assessments to students, including abiding by social distancing and mask protocols. Cleaning and disinfecting procedures would also apply to test materials, desk, tables, and chairs after each student use. OAA realizes schools are opening in a variety of diverse ways this year. We want to provide guidance on the in-person EOC testing for this school year. The decision to bring students into the building for administration of the EOC assessment should be made in conjunction with the high school administration, central office staff, and local health department. These decisions should be made in accordance with the local health department and state government guidelines at the time of testing. Safety expectations provided in the document COVID-19 considerations for reopening schools should be followed during the administration. And lastly, here is my contact information for EOC assessments. Um, for the early graduation pathway program related questions, please contact Dr. Sweeney and here and I, I have his information listed there for you. For EOC assessment uh, related request uh, related questions, please contact myself, Shara Savage, and my contact information is listed there for you as well. Please check out our other back to school trainings provided by OA and thank you for your time and your attention today.